Hello, my name is Lavora Celeste Vincent. I'm better known as just Celeste here on the internet. I have 13,000 followers. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. In other words, I am nobody of any single kind of consequence, but if I've stumbled upon your For You page before, you'll know that my content is meant to make you smile. It's made to make you, make you laugh. It is supposed to be entertaining. This video is not for your entertainment. It is not made to make you smile. It is not made to make you laugh. I am not making this to be enjoyable. I am going to be loud. I am going to get angry. I am angry. I will not apologize for my anger at any point because language alone cannot show just how upset I really am. What is happening in Gaza right now is nothing short of absolutely f***ing horrific. And if you're not absolutely disgusted, if you are not embarrassed to be the same race as the people carrying out these atrocious f***ing acts, if you are not horrified by the situation, you are lying to yourself. You are not listening. You should be disgusted. You should be furious. I am furious. That is my family. No, I'm not Palestinian. But those are human beings. We're the same. I have more in common with these people than I do Elon Musk. I have more in common with these people than I do the priests of my church. These are human beings. And they're dying on my money, my tax dollars. They're murdered. They're being murdered. For what? Proxy wars? Over some land? promised to you by a book. A dead tree promised you land and you're going to make it a mass grave. You're disgusting, your pigs and your animals. Every person that condones what the government of Israel is doing is disgusting. Yes, that is a bold statement. I do not care. How can you look at those children and say they deserve it? How can you say that it is worth it? It is not worth it! None of this had to happen, but it did. And now my generation is in the wrong because I have empathy for them, because I see myself in those kids, because I see my sisters in those little girls, because I see my dad in those men, because I see my mother in the faces of those women. I'm at fault. I'm too soft. Get over yourself. You're worried about school exams you have the right to be worried if you're gonna pass high school you have the gift to be worried about 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 gas in your tank tomorrow these people have nothing they have nothing and you're worried about your fucking money you're worried about about your reputation there was a walkout at my college those kids came out of class. What they paid for, they paid thousands of dollars to be there. Okay, they walked out and said, it's not right, listen to me! And they are brave. They're strong and they're braver than the upper class will ever be because they don't understand. There is no Switzerland in this. There is no waiting it out. You have to do something. I have to do something. We have to do something. I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for my generation to fix everything. I didn't ask for these problems, but it is my responsibility because I'm a human being and they are too. It is my responsibility to make sure their voices are heard. Does the Bible really condone this? Israel, they say, in the Bible that you Christians believe in, was promised to God for us. Well, was it? Let's have a look. This is where they go to, Genesis chapter 15. On that day, the Lord made a covenant, that means a promise, with Abram, or Abraham, and he said, To your descendants I give this land, from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river the Euphrates, and the land of the Kenites, the Kenzites, the Kenamites, the Hittites, the Pezzarites, the Rephites, the Amorites, Canaanites, Gigashites, and the Jubasites. That's a whole lot of land that God seems to be promising Abram. Well, he doesn't seem to be. He is. Watch this. It's not the only time. This is Joshua chapter 1. I promise you, said God, what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on the land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. So it looks like the Bible did promise this land through God 
to the Israelites, to the Jews. And this was about three and a half thousand years ago. Now, if you look at a modern map of Israel, that is it. And if you took notice of that Bible text, of those Bible verses, those scriptures I shared with you, that's not the promise to the land of Israel that God promised. That's not the promised land. That's not the, the area. That's not, 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 not the kilometers. There's a very short and truncated version of what God promised. In fact, you want to see what God promised? This is what he promised. He promised them land from Egypt today, deep into Saudi Arabia, right up into Iraq, almost all of Syria and a good part of Lebanon. God promised the Israelites, the Jews, three and a half thousand years, quite a big chunk of land. So what happened? Well, you've got to ask yourself the question, when God makes promises like this, are they conditional? Now, those who say that the land is Israel's, was Israel's back then, is Israel's now, and will be Israel's forever, they claim that God's promise to Israel was not conditional. It was unconditional. But is that what the Bible says? Well, look at this. We're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39. So remember this, said God. Keep it firmly in your mind. The Lord is God both in heaven and on earth, and there is no other. If you obey all the decrees and commands I'm giving you today, all will be well with you and your children. I am giving you these instructions so you will enjoy a long life in the land the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Seems conditional to me. If you obey the commands that I give you, if you keep your part of the bargain, Israel, then this land will be given to you for all time. Let's have another look at another verse. This is Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Look, says God, I'm giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse. You'll be blessed if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today. But you will be cursed if you reject the commands of the Lord your God and turn away from him and worship God you have not known before. So here again, to me, this looks conditional. Where God's saying, hey, I'm making a promise on my side, you can have the land. But on your side, you've got a promise to obey me and to follow me and to be my disciples. Well, it gets very clear when we get to this chapter here, Deuteronomy chapter 28, because this is where God puts it on the line. He says, if you obey me, go and read the chapter for yourself. We don't have time tonight. But if you're really interested in this subject, you can't miss this chapter. Because God says, if you obey me, I will give you the land forever. But then he gives a whole heap of curses. He says, if you don't obey me, this is what will happen. Verse 21, you'll have affliction of disease. If you don't obey me, verse 23, you'll have drought. God said, if you don't obey me, you'll be defeated by your enemies, verse 25. God said, if you don't, invade, uh, if you don't obey me, you're going to face foreign invasion, verse 33. God says, if you don't obey me, you're going to face exile, verse 36, occupation, verse 43. And then he says, you'll face dispersion and scattering all over the world, verse 64, if you break your side of the bargain. So we have to look at what Israel, ancient Israel did. Did they keep their side of the bargain? Did they obey God? Did they follow God? Were they faithful to God? Did they take the story of God, which was given to them, to the whole world? You don't have to go too far to see that they didn't. Isaiah chapter 1, look at this. This is Isaiah begging Israel to come back to God. Listen, O heavens. Pay attention, earth. This is what the Lord says. The children I raised and cared for have rebelled against me. Even an ox knows its owner and a donkey recognises its master's care, but Israel doesn't know its master. My people don't recognise my care for them. Oh, what a sinful nation they are, loaded down with a burden of guilt. They are evil people, corrupt children who have rejected the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on Him. It's pretty sobering. So how are they able to deceive people into thinking that Israel is being rewarded the land today? Here's how they do it. It's like a shell game. You see, Israel was kicked out of their land at least two times, if not more. There were two major exiles where the Jews were utterly defeated. The first 
big exile was in 586 to 516 BC. Then the other one occurred when the Romans conquered them after 70 AD. In 586 BC, after defeating the Assyrians, a new Mesopotamian empire invades Israel. The Babylonians ransack the temple and systematically burn the sacred city. Before his eyes, the Babylonian victors slay the sons of Zedekiah, the last Davidic king, then blind him. After 400 years, Israel is wiped out. The Babylonians round up the Israelite priests, prophets, and scribes and drag them in chains to Babylon. Babylonian records confirm the presence of Israelites, including the king, in exile. So many years later, after this event, obviously Israel had to be regathered again back to their land to yet be kicked out again by the Romans. So the regathering to the land, which was a prophecy, has already occurred. And the Bible very clearly says that the land promise has already been fulfilled. Joshua Chapter 21, verses 43 through 45. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around, according to all that he had sworn to their fathers, and not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel all came to pass. The priests held up the ark and God held back the waters. <gasps> it's just like when Moses parted the Red Sea. It's true then. God must be with Joshua as he was with Moses. The Israelites' faith in Joshua grew and grew, for now they knew he followed in the footsteps of Moses. So the trick is to just pick up Bible verses and scramble them around to make them say whatever you want them to say, rather than reading them in context with the proper chronology. Now I am not a preterist that says everything has been fulfilled. I am very open to God having a plan for a remnant of the Jews in the future, if they turn to Jesus. But it doesn't have to be this chunk of land in the Middle East. In fact, God promises all those who are in Christ Jesus that they will inherit the earth, not just a little tiny piece of land. The land covenant given to national Israel was fulfilled under Joshua. See Joshua chapter 11. The land covenant given to Abraham was fulfilled under David and Solomon. See 2 Samuel chapter 8, 1 Kings chapter 4, and Nehemiah chapter 9. There is no more earthly promised land. The promised land for the new covenant church, which is the body of Christ, is New Jerusalem. Hebrews chapter 11 says, For he, Abraham, looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. He didn't look for an earthly city. He looked for a heavenly city, which is the new Jerusalem. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned but now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Hebrews chapter 13 says, Here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. That city is the new Jerusalem. 
Apostle John called the old city Sodom and Egypt. In Revelation 11.8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The current city of Jerusalem was built by Roman homosexual Emperor Hadrian between 130 to 135 AD. The current city of Jerusalem was not built by God. It was built by a pagan Roman emperor. It was called Elia Capitolina. That was the name given to it when Hadrian built it. It wasn't even called Jerusalem. The Jerusalem that was, God had made sure that it was destroyed in 70 AD. He abolished that city. After the Romans had finished leveling that city of Jerusalem, passers-by would later come through the area and would walk over the ruins of that city and not been able to tell that there had ever been a city there. That's how thoroughly and completely the city of Jerusalem had been destroyed. It was later renamed Jerusalem in the 4th century. Then in 1516, Suleiman the Magnificent of the Ottoman Empire, which is the Turkish Empire, built the walls around the so-called Old City of Jerusalem. Every year, millions of Christians spend their hard-earned money to go to Palestine and visit the supposed Holy City, the one built by Roman Emperor Hadrian. They talk about the old city walls built by Suleiman of the Ottoman Empire. The city of Jerusalem today is a combination of Roman construction and Ottoman Empire construction. It has nothing to do with the Old Testament Israel. For more information about this, see my previous video called The Rebuilding of Jerusalem, Pagan Built. Galatians chapter 4 says, Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but his son by the free woman was born as the result of a divine promise. These things are being taken figuratively. The women represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Now Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. We are children of the new Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem. Galatians 3.29 says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And Galatians 3.16 says, The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say unto seeds, meaning many people, but unto your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. According to this passage, we are counted as Israel. We are also counted as Jews according to Romans 2.28 and 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. A true Jew is not a physical child of Abraham, but instead a spiritual child of God. It is not the physical circumcision made by man that counts. It is the heart circumcision made by the spirit that matters. Now, let's go back and address what this young lady had to say. tree promised you land and you're going to make it a mass grave when she said dead tree she was referring to a book because the bible is made out of paper which comes from wood which comes from trees but as we've seen the bible has been misquoted by zionists for their agenda which in turn tarnishes the reputation of the god of the bible this is why many of the youth are turning away from the God of the scriptures and an increase of young people becoming Muslim. There needs to be a reformation among those who hold to the scriptures because our God is being maligned by the bloodthirsty Zionist agenda and the young people are being turned away from the God of the Bible as a result.